Thank you very much everyone for joining us in the room and online today. Um, before I begin, I would like to first acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I would like to extend that respect to any First Nations people participating in our seminar today. So it is my very great pleasure to introduce today um, Miriam um, Hamlada. So Miriam received, her, she's our speaker for today. She received her training as a chemical engineer at Arak University in Iran, and then completed a master's at the University of Tehran in energy systems engineering. And she's been waiting patiently for two years to come to Australia, but because of our international restrictions with COVID and stuff, she's had to wait a while, but uh, she was uh, finally arrived in Australia in, um, uh, July last year. So it's absolutely wonderful um, that she's arrived and has actually started um, her PhD. So Miriam is undertaking a PhD at the University of Melbourne with one of the largest geothermal research groups in Australia. Um, Miriam accept, graciously accepted an invitation from GA to undertake a Australian postgraduate research internship and um, to make a slight detour with her PhD. So I had a particular interest in what's how is geothermal how could geothermal in australia um, contribute to hydrogen production and so uh, miriam has very kindly taken out five months of her phd to just make a slight detour and do an investigation of that so we're going to find out all about her findings today so that's enough from me and i would like to hand over to miriam um, to share what she's found thank you very much miriam uh. Hi everyone, I'm Mariam and thank you for being here. Um, today I'm gonna uh, talk about hydrogen production from uh, geothermal energy. Uh, I've done this research as an uh, internship from Geoscience of Australia and this research is supervised by Dr. Andrew Pites from the Geoscience of Australia and also Professor Guillermo Narciliu and Dr. Uh, Graham Bresmo from the University of Melbourne. Uh, I'll start my presentation with a brief introduction about the hydrogen production and its importance. Uh, then clean hydrogen strategy in Australia. After that, geothermal drive and hydrogen production routes uh, will be explained. Then geothermal resources in Australia will be reviewed uh, in order to find the potential geothermal routes for producing hydrogen in Australia. After that, integration of geothermal with solar energy will be explained. And finally, uh, I conclude. I will conclude my presentation with identified research challenges and research gaps for future work. Uh, let's start with this main question: Why hydrogen is important? Uh, hydrogen, as a uh, carrier, uh, as an energy carrier, has the capability of energy storage at both large scale mainly for renewable energy integration and at a small scale for a transportation. Generally, hydrogen can be used in different applications uh, that based on the final user can be classified as uh, industry for uh, producing chemical feedstock and also as an uh, energy source in a transportation for different vehicles, ships, aircrafts power generation in fuel cell technologies, and finally heating and cooling of the building. Another uh, important perspective on uh, producing hydrogen, especially clean hydrogen, is related to its uh, potential contribution in climate change uh, mitigation and also CO2 emission reduction. Uh, uh, given all of these uh, benefits, some countries all over the world uh, have horizons of movements uh, toward hydrogen economy where hydrogen uh, can be produced, uh, stored and even export uh, as a main en carrier energy. Uh, in spite of the growing role of uh, renewable energies uh, in the energy sector, these resources have some uh, challenges and issues such as uh, intermittent nature and uh, storage difficulty cows uh, imbalance between demand and supply of energy. Uh, while with integration of hydrogen production technologies with different kind of renewable energy resources, hydrogen uh, can be uh, produced and stored to use once it's required. So 
uh, hydrogen production technologies can be considered as the appropriate option to manage imbalance between demand and supply. As a result, uh, renewable and hydrogen-based energy systems would have an, an important role in the, uh, future energy uh, supply with positive effect on energy security, environment, economy, final users, and finally sustainable development. So it's important to give a lot of attention on uh, researching and developing uh, hydrogen production technologies as a main and important steps uh, toward improving a successful hydrogen economy. Uh, hydrogen can be produced through different routes uh, based fossil fuel and renewable uh, technologies. Uh, hydrogen extracted from fossil fuel feed stock is known as a grey hydrogen. Uh, releasing huge amount of CO2 emission into the atmosphere or as a blue hydrogen uh, by integration with carbon capture storage, it uh, avoid CO2 emission into the atmosphere. Uh, on the other hand, clean and green hydrogen can be produced uh, from fossil from uh, non fossil fuel feed stocks such as biomass or water. Uh, splitting uh, water uh, so thermolysis and electrolysis uh, process are the most widely used of extracting hydrogen from uh, water. Currently, uh, more than uh, about 95% of global hydrogen is producing uh, by fossil fuel routes and only less than 5% uh, of uh, global hydrogen is producing by renewable uh, routes. Since uh, producing hydrogen from fossil fuel uh, technologies are more affordable than uh, renewable ones, uh, while renewable ones are more uh, sustainable as a result of having a lower carbon footprint. So there is always a trade off between affordability and sustainability of uh, producing hydrogen through different uh, routes. Uh, water uh, splitting through electrolysis process is a mature technology uh, that can produce hydrogen with a high purity from uh, water. Uh, this process uh, can be run with electricity as an input to activate uh, water decomposition into hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, electrolysis process based on the different technologies uh, can be classified as alkaline, proton exchange membranes, solid oxide electrolyzers. Uh, two former technologies are known uh, as a conventional electrolysis uh, with uh, a low operating temperature up to 80, 90 degrees centigrade and also low efficiency. So they need uh, high electricity as an input for decomposition of water process. The later uh, technology is known as an unconventional electrolysis uh, with uh, high operating temperature uh, in the range of 700 to 900 degrees centigrade and also with high efficiency, which uh, leads to a lower electricity consumption for uh, extraction of hydrogen from water. Uh, alkaline technologies have a uh, lower capital cost uh, than uh, PEM te technologies, uh, while PEM technologies uh, have uh, more uh, technical benefits such as rapid response, um, which is more important when it's integrated with renewable energies. Uh, let's talk about the importance of producing hydrogen in Australia. Um, in line with a technology investment roadmap in Australia, a uh, clean hydrogen strategy as a low emission technology can support Australia's low emission plan, uh, as well as development of both export and domestic hydrogen industry so that make Australia a global leader for producing and exporting hydrogen by uh, 2030 and 2050. Based on the national hydrogen strategy, clean hydrogen in Australia can be produced uh, through renewable electrolysis process as well as fossil fuel uh, route integrated with carbon capture storage. However, in a successful hydrogen economy, uh, the cost of producing clean hydrogen must be competitive within the market uh, in comparison with uh, fossil fuel routes. For this uh, reason, it's projected clean hydrogen uh, will be 
cost competitive within the market in Australia when the cost of that uh, is $2 per kilogram or less. As a result, Australia is uh, planning uh, to meet this uh, economic stretch goal producing hydrogen uh, less than $2 per kilogram by 2050. Uh, here the question is that uh, how clean hydrogen through uh, renewable electrolysis can be cost competitive. This figure uh, shows the production cost of hydrogen from renewable electrolysis and as it's obvious the cost of electricity and also the mm, capital cost of electrolyzer technologies uh, have great contributions to the production cost of hydrogen. So decreasing the cost of electricity and also electrolyzer technology uh, would be critical in uh, meeting economic storage goal of producing hydrogen in Australia through uh, development of low cost and high efficiency electrolyzers and also using cost effective renewable electricity to run water decomposition in the electrolysis process. In terms of electrolyzer technology, it's uh, projected that alkaline technologies have less cost for producing hydrogen in comparison to the PEM technologies as a result of their uh, lower capital cost. Uh, in addition, uh, high temperature uh, electrolyzers can be beneficial economically to produce clean hydrogen as a result of their uh, lower electricity consumption. In terms of um, electricity cost, geothermal energy has lower operating cost uh, in comparison to other renewable energies such as solar and wind due to their uh, high uh, capacity factor. Another important point here is that based on the literature, hydrogen production uh, by using geothermal energy can be more affordable uh, than other renewable energy. So it's uh, important to investigate different routes of producing hydrogen uh, by geothermal energy. Uh, hydrogen can be produced uh, by geothermal energy through different routes. Uh, direct use of geothermal steam can be applicable for producing hydrogen in tectonic spreading zone and volcanic regions where huge emission of hydrogen uh, uh, with other components such as methane, uh, CO2 and uh, CHR can be released into the atmosphere. But uh, producing hydrogen uh, through uh, geothermal steam needs uh, gas cleaning technologies. Geothermal heat in thermochemical process can be used to produce hydrogen uh, from water decomposition by using different uh, thermochemical cycles. This process is run based on the heat at high temperature of about 800 to 900 degrees centigrade. Uh, however, there are some low temperature uh, cycles that may give uh, an opportunity for producing hydrogen via geothermal heat. This uh, figures shows the possibility of geothermal energy in thermally hydrogen production via cycle operating in temperature of 300 to 500 degrees centigrade. Another route uh, is using geothermal electricity for producing hydrogen from water splitting uh, in conventional electrolysis such as PEM and alkaline technologies. And finally, uh, using both geothermal heat and electricity can be used to produce hydrogen from water splitting through unconventional electrolysis or thermochemical hybrid process. Uh, thermal decomposition of water for producing hydrogen uh, by using a low temperature or hybrid thermochemical uh, cycle it still needs uh, research and uh, development in terms of efficiency movement and also cost reduction. Unconventional uh, electrolysis for producing hydrogen are more efficient in comparison to the conventional low temperature electrolysis as a result of their, uh, operate, their uh, higher operating temperature. So they need lower required work to uh, run a water active uh, water decomposition process so uh, they can have lower hydrogen production costs. The correlation of uh, temperature uh, 
and also the required energy for water splitting through unconventional uh, electrolyzer can be seen from uh, this figure, uh, right hand side figure. Based on this figure, required energy for water splitting can be classified, uh, can be divided as a electrical energy and also thermal energy. So uh, since um, electricity consumption serves as a main contributor to the energy consumption of water splitting, increasing the temperature of water entering to the electrolyzer can improve uh, the efficiency as well as decrease uh, the required energy uh, so that have positive effect on the cost of producing hydrogen. Let's learn a bit about this technology. Uh, some of the required energy for splitting water through high temperature electrolyzers uh, can be supplied by geothermal uh, energy to vaporize water up to maximum temperature of geothermal reservoirs. Uh, then resulted steam can be uh, overheated in some heat exchangers, recapturing heat from the outlet of electrolyzer. And finally, uh, by applying electricity, uh, thermochemical uh, reaction of water decomposition uh, can be run. The cost of hydrogen uh, production through a high temperature electrolyzer is driving a steel weight uh, electricity cost and also capital cost of the electrolyzer. But uh, the contribution of electricity cost in this uh, process decreased as a result of using thermal energy to improve the temperature of water entering to the electrolyzer. Uh, now that we consider different routes of uh, producing hydrogen by geothermal energy, we should uh, investigate the different geothermal reservoirs. If we want to uh, classify geothermal reservoirs uh, in a uh, really general way, we will have two overall group as the hydrothermal reservoirs and also hot dry rock reservoirs. Most of the exploited uh, reservoirs all over the world are hydrothermal reservoirs with uh, volcanic rocks. Uh, that high temperature can be found at the shallow depths, less than three kilometers. Uh, another type of hydrothermal reservoirs are a hot sedimentary aquifer with sedimentary and fractured aquifers. Uh, these reservoirs can be found at a location without volcanic and tectonic activities, such as Australia. These reservoirs have a high natural porosity and permeability, so water circulation occurs naturally. Uh, in hot dry rock reservoirs, uh, which are known as the enhanced geothermal reservoirs, higher temperature above more than uh, 200 degrees centigrade can be found at deeper depths, uh, above more than three kilometers. These reservoirs are on fractured rock with uh, low porosity and permeability. So the water circulation uh, within these reservoirs occurs artificially with uh, some existing technologies. In Australia, uh, due to the lack of uh, volcanic activities, uh, hydrothermal reservoirs are as a shallow and deep aquifers. Uh, shallow aquifers uh, can be used just for direct use application of geothermal energy uh, as a result of having lower temperature, less than 100 degrees centigrade at deeper, at shallower depths. But a deeper aquifer uh, with a higher temperature in the range of 100 to 180 degrees centigrade uh, can be used for electricity generation uh, from binary power plant cycles in addition to direct use of geothermal energy. Australia also has a lot of hot drug rock reservoirs uh, where a temperature more than 200 degrees centigrade can be found at the depths of about five kilometers. These reservoirs may be uh, useful, uh, uh, maybe suitable for, direct, for uh, electricity generation as a result of having high temperature, but according to the some exploration activities, power generation from these reservoirs uh, wasn't uh, successful economically. However, um, in Australia, there have uh, few small scale successful project for power generation from hot sedimentary aquifer that shows the possibility of Australia for producing power geothermally. 
Uh, the first successful uh, geothermal project was a 20 kilowatt ORC in Muka, operated for three years by using about 86 uh, degrees centigrade water from an existing water bore at the depth of 1.5 kilometers. The second uh, project uh, was related to an uh, 80 kilowatt ORC in Bridgeville, operated for more than 20 years. Uh, by using uh, 98 degree centigrade water from a tone water bore at the depth of one point kilometer. And finally, uh, and last uh, geothermal uh, project is related uh, to uh, 310 kilowatt ORC in Winton, uh, commissioned in 2019 by using uh, water at a at temperature of about 86 degree centigrade from an existing water bore at a depth of one point kilometers. So uh, the successful projects of power generation from hot sedimentary aquifer uh, and also identify productive uh, aquifers in some sedimentary basins in Australia from one hand and unsuccessful uh, project from uh, um, enhanced geothermal reservoirs or hot dry rock reservoirs. Uh, from the other hand, confirmed the possible geothermal resource in Australia for producing uh, power geothermally or hot sedimentary aquifer with the temperature of less than 100 degree centigrade. Since uh, organic ranking binary cycle or ORC is applicable when the source temperature is about 90 degree centigrade, uh, so this kind of power plant uh, is suitable for power generation in Australian uh, applications. However, the efficiency of converting heat to the electricity in this kind of power plants, uh, ORC power plant, is low at the temperatures below of uh, 150 degrees centigrade. As a result, it's important to improve the efficiency of ORC for producing power in the Australian context based on the different methods. Um, or, uh, there are different configuration of ORC for producing uh, power, among them uh, some more advanced configurations such as dual pressure cycle or recapturated, regenerated uh, cycle, uh, which have additional equipments, uh, can have improved efficiency than simple ORC power plant. Uh, another uh, advanced configuration of ORC is integrating the power plant with thermoelectric generator. Uh, thermoelectric generator can replace with the condenser of ORC in order to turn waste heat of the power plant into the electricity directly and then improves the efficiency and the power of the system. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, another way to improve the efficiency and also power and finally hydrogen rates by using geothermal energy uh, is integration of geothermal energy in Australia with other renewable energies such as uh, solar energy. Solar can be used to uh, preheat geothermal fluid directly through improving the temperature of uh, geothermal uh, fluid before entering to the ORC. Solar energy also can be used to superheat the working fluid of uh, ORC by improving the temperature of that uh, after the first heat exchanger. Uh, uh, in addition to uh, uh, the low efficiency of uh, ORC power plant powered by geothermal energy, especially in the Australian uh, context, uh, geothermal reservoirs uh, have another barrier, uh, uh, including the high initial cost that can limit its application for producing power and finally hydrogen production. Uh, for this reason, extraction geothermal uh, energy from existing oil and gas well in oil fields uh, can be important. Geothermal energy can be extracted from existing oil and gas well in oil field uh, through tools produced water from active wells as a byproduct uh, can be used for geothermal applications based on the temperature it has 
and also injected working fluid to the target depths of abundant well uh, can be used uh, as another route to produce uh, geothermal energy from existing well in oil pool. In, the, in this manner, uh, working fluid is uh, injected and circulated in a closed loop uh, of a double pipe or um, U-tube heat exchanger as a well bore in order to extract geothermal energy. Uh, in active wells, the uh, operation, uh, the power uh, production uh, relies on the rate and also the temperature of produced uh, water and also the operation of the oil and gas well. Uh, there are, uh, while the power generation uh, can be more manageable in abundant well as a result of more control uh, in the temperature and the rate uh, and also the, the type of the fluid which is injected into the well bore and also it uh, relies uh, on the circulation of fluid in the well bore, not the operation of the well. Uh, however, the geothermal reservoirs in oil fields uh, have low to moderate uh, temperature, uh, so um, it can cause the lower efficiency of ORC and also it can uh, limit the application of uh, some uh, oil and gas wells in oil field. Um, uh, another, uh, one uh, possible uh, way to overcome this challenge is a downhole power generation in oil field. So integrating thermoelectric generator with uh, heat exchangers in the abundant well. In this uh, manner, a thermoelectric uh, devices are installed uh, on a tubing a pipe as a producing pipe and also as a result of temperature difference between tubing uh, and also injecting pipe, uh, thermoelectric devices can produce power from the heat directly. Uh, the uh, right hand side figure shows the vertical uh, abundant well integrated with thermoelectric generator and the uh, left hand side figure shows the horizontal uh, configuration. Downhole power generation in oil field uh, can facilitate more uh, oil wells for power generation since thermoelectric devices can operate in a variety of uh, temperature as low as 30 degrees centigrade. Uh, downhole power generation also can eliminate the need for transportation of uh, produced water to the surface that can cause a uh, heat loss a lot. And also this technology, the downhole power generation, can be integrated with a conventional uh, ORC binary plants to uh, in increase the uh, rate of power generation and also uh, rate of hydrogen production. Uh, until now, uh, we considered uh, uh, some improvements uh, on the ORC power plant driven by uh, geothermal energies in Australian uh, context. So um, let's take a look at the, uh, the, the whole system for producing hydrogen by using geothermal energy. Based on the thermodynamic and thermoeconomic assessments for producing hydrogen through geothermal energy, there are different uh, important parameters uh, having important effect on the efficiency of the whole system producing hydrogen and also the rate and the cost of produced hydrogen. Uh, in this manner, improving the efficiency of power plant, uh, decreasing the heat loss uh, in different components of the power plant, uh, finding and using optimum working condition uh, in terms of geothermal field and also uh, ORC components, and uh, water preheating before entering the electrolyzer uh, process can have great effect on the cost and also the rate of produced hydrogen that should be considered during the development of uh, hydrogen production system. Uh, as a uh, uh, Summary and query works. Uh, uh, we can say geothermal reservoirs in Australia have low temperature up to 100 degrees centigrade. So ORC power plant can be a likely option for power generation uh, in the Australian context, but this uh, configuration may not be efficient enough uh, to be viable economically. 
So uh, using more advanced technology uh, and also decreasing the heat losses uh, from the cycle by applying thermoelectric generator devices can improve the efficiency and the uh, flow rate of power, the rate of the power and hydrogen as well. Integration with solar energy uh, is another possible way to improve the temperature of geothermal and also improve the temperature of the working fluid to improve the efficiency of the system. Uh, extracting geothermal from oil feed is another possible option, but potential of having a suitable flow rate and temperature need to be uh, considered. Uh, so far, uh, <clears throat> we studied the potential routes for producing hydrogen uh, sort of geothermal energy. Uh, however, there is a lot to be done. And now uh, I've uh, identified some research challenges and research questions uh, for future work. So there are multiple key elements uh, that are so important. The first element is geothermal energy resource, hot sedimentary aquifer in Australia context. Um, using more update and uh, uh, accurate uh, data related to lysological properties of geothermal reservoirs, hot sedimentary aquifer in Australia, must be considered in order to investigate the uh, feasibility and appropriate uh, the property of hot sedimentary aquifers for producing power and also producing hydrogen. So uh, here at the the role of the geoscience of Australia uh, would be highlighted because the this organ can uh, provide us more uh, accurate and up-to-date data uh, for uh, have a better investigation of the potential of hot sedimentary aquifers. And also geothermal uh, wells uh, can play an important uh, role uh, in hydrogen production system in terms of energy conversion and also the cost of producing hydrogen. So it's important to uh, develop a numerical model of geothermal well as the main and important steps in development of hydrogen production systems in order to investigate the feasibility and thermal capacity of the wells for producing power and finally hydrogen rate. Um, since uh, geothermal gradient uh, changed by the location, temperature of geothermal drilling depths and uh, drilling costs are important factors that must be considered during the development of the hydrogen production system by geothermal energy. And since the quality of extracted energy from the well uh, can be uh, increased by drilling deeper depths, but at the other, uh, from the other hand, uh, the cost of drilling will be increased. So there is affordability between the quality of energy extracted and also the cost of the drilling depths. So it is important to find out optimum drilling depths. In terms of water resources, uh, water availability, accessibility, and the price and purity of water is uh, are another important factors that must be considered in order to uh, find out most feasible hot sedimentary aquifer for producing power and hydrogen. And since uh, geothermal energy can be used to run a desalination process for producing fresh water uh, for the electrolysis process, it is important to investigate the possibility of uh, integration of hot sedimentary aquifer with the uh, desalination process in order you know, to um, create a multi-generation system and produce at the same time power, hydrogen and uh, fresh water. In terms of potential of oil feed, uh, proper flow rate and temperature of produced water from an active well must be considered uh, to investigate the most feasible wells for producing geothermal energy and using this power in producing hydrogen. Uh, temperature, flow rate, and uh, the type of the fluid uh, injected into the abundant well and also insulation type of uh, pipe during uh, within the well bores and also bottom hole temperature of the abundant well are important factors uh, must be considered during uh, development of accurate numerical model of oil wells in order to investigate the potential and the possibility 
of abundant wealth for producing geothermal energy and using that power geothermally uh, for uh, hydrogen production. Uh, uh, power plant uh, elements uh, among different configuration of ORC uh, power plant, advanced configuration and those with decreasing heat loss uh, by using uh, thermoelectric generators can improve the efficiency of power plant and also the efficiency of the whole system producing hydrogen. Uh, but at the same time, this uh, configuration can burden uh, extra cost in the uh, system producing hydrogen. So it's important to uh, find out the efficient and cost effective configuration of ORC power plant in the system producing hydrogen. Uh, the cost of equipment, geothermal extraction, the cost caused by uh, heat losses during electrolysis technology and also uh, ORC components uh, are important factors that must be considered during economic assessment. Uh, using and finding optimum operating uh, conditions uh, have important effect on the cost and also the rate of produced hydrogen. So all of these uh, factors uh, must be considered during uh, development of the system that produces hydrogen. Uh, and uh, using optimum operating condition can have a positive effect on the performance of the system. Uh, integration with other renewable energy is another uh, important element. Uh, considering the temperature and uh, the temperature of geothermal and solar inputs such as solar irradiance, uh, so it's important uh, to investigate the capacity factor map of solar energy in order to find the most feasible and ideal location for integrating of uh, hot sedimentary aquifer with solar energies. And uh, here, uh, the, the, here uh, the role of geothermal, geoscience of Australia can be highlighted again in order to help us uh, because geothermal, because geoscience of Australia have uh, such accurate capacity factor maps for solar and also renew, uh, other renewable energy, such as the wind, that can be uh, help us uh, in order to find most uh, feasible and uh, appropriate location for uh, integrating hot sedimentary aquifer with uh, solar energy. Uh, given different type and also the size of the solar energy, it's important to find out efficient and cost effective design of the solar energy, for example, different kind of uh, solar characters uh, in the system uh, uh, which is integrated with uh, renewable uh, energies. And since uh, thermal energy system uh, can improve the productivity of solar and finally produce uh, hydrogen, and uh, given a different type of size and uh, type and size of the thermal energy storage technologies, it is important to find out optimum size of thermal energy storage. In terms of thermolysis uh, elements uh, in conventional uh, water splitting through conventional electrolysis, the efficiency, the type, the operating temperature of the electrolyzer technology and also the mm, temperature of water entering to the electrolyzers are important factor that must be considered during development of a uh, system producing hydrogen. And since uh, geothermal energy as a thermal energy source uh, can be used to preheat water during the course of hydrogen production, it's, a, it's important to investigate the possibility of hot sedimentary aquifer in Australia for preheating uh, water before entering, the, entering to the electrolysis. Uh, unconventional, uh, in unconventional electrolyzer, the cost of thermal energy, um, heat exchangers, and also cost of electricity, especially using low cost electricity such as uh, ultra solar technology uh, that is uh, introduced as a new technology in roadmap of Australia uh, must be considered during the techno economic optimizations in order to find out the uh, feasibility and the possibility of unconventional technologies for producing hydrogen. And uh, conducting thermodynamic and thermoeconomic analysis uh, 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 are 
is so important uh, for using low temperature and also hybrid thermochemical cycles for producing hydrogen. And also ecosystem consideration is another important element must be considered for uh, hydro production systems via uh, geothermal energy in Australia. Um, <clears throat> geothermal wastewater can be injected or discarded. Uh, so by considering different risks and benefits, such as financial consideration, location of injection well and temperature of injection as the risk and also prolonging life time of the reservoirs, uh, minimizing uh, the environmental impact as the uh, benefits of injecting wastewater, geothermal wastewater into the injection wall must be considered. And it's important to conduct an environmental assessment uh, for uh, during the uh, lifetime of the system, including drilling stage, construction stage, uh, maintenance stage. And the effect of the such uh, system for producing hydrogen by uh, geothermal energy in Australia uh, must be considered on the human uh, society and ecosystem through uh, multi-objective optimization method. Well, thank you so much for your attention and patience, and I would be happy to answer your questions.